Hello and welcome to the big picture. After months of waiting for the white paper on black money, the finance minister Pranab Mukherjee tabled it today in the parliament. What does this report say? The government has not given any figures of its own estimates of how much black money is generated in the economy or how much of it has flown out. The white paper quotes one of the estimates of global financial integrity in its 2011 December report, which puts India in the 15th rank when it comes to outflow of illicit funds at an estimated $104 billion. China has the dubious distinction of being in the top with a huge illicit outflow of $2,467 billion. The report discusses various problems in checking black money and lists out the strategies to tackle the problem. The reaction to the report is unanimous disappointment as it gives no names or amounts held by individuals. What does this white paper mean? What it discloses and what it doesn't? We are looking at all this today and trying to find out if this white paper will take us forward in tackling the menace of black money. To discuss this, we have with us today Mr. Gurdas Das Gupta, a CPIM, CPI Lok Sabha member and also a member of the Standing Committee on Finance. Professor Nay Kamal Nayan Kabra, an economist and chair professor at the Institute of Social Sciences and someone who has been studying the issue of black money and its impact for a long time. Uh, Mr. Rajiv Kumar, Secretary General of FIKI, will also be with us and Hema Ramkrishnan, Senior Editor, Economic Times and also someone who has been writing and following issues related to this subject for a long time. Welcome to all of you. Before I go to my guests, let us look at the reaction to this, to this uh, white paper. It is totally disappointing. The information that was expected from the government about the quantum of money, the names of persons, and the action taken to recover the money. None of this have found place in the white paper. Then what is it? It is an empty paper with no information and it's totally disappointing. Okay, uh, Professor Cabra, this is a typical uh, political reaction. You know, white paper contains nothing, white paper is a black paper, white paper is an empty paper. All these are typical political reactions. You tell me, as an economist, somebody who has been studying this issue for a long time, you, you even wrote a book on a black economy as far back as 1982. Do you think this white paper contains something which we did not know till yesterday? I think even if one doesn't make bold to say that it says something which is not known before, but it certainly uh, is an exercise where the political class has to understand this thing, that it is not the names and the estimate, but the processes and the agencies and the socio-economic structure and processes where this report, certainly not a whitewashing report, it does go, it travel some distance, particularly given the fact that it is a first time an official study and published and shared with the public. <coughs> uh, so uh, it suggests strength as well as weaknesses. And I think uh, the public discourse and debate should take place on what are the strong points that it has brought out and recognized officially. What, and what, are, the, what, are, what, what are the strong points? Give us two, three, one, two, three, three, three points. Three important points I would bring out uh, and particularly that though in its technical theoretical definition it doesn't up front, but any cursory look even would show that the corporate sector, the most organized, the biggest, the largest sector, is the most important culprit that comes out absolutely clearly without any iota of doubt. You look even at the contents and so on, and it is understandable. It's a part of the formal economy, the black economy in that sense, mostly, and the GDP is 23 to 24 percent is accounted for by the corporate sector, having just uh, involving directly as beneficiaries uh, and controllers less than 1 percent of the population. Hmm. The second thing which is a very important missing thing is that a non-marginal mainstream phenomena 
even if it is 20 to 30 percent. You said cutting across uh, sectors and so on, this is one of the largest uh, uh, segments of the economy. And uh, no aspect of the social economic life can remain unaffected by it. So that uh, since estimation of such an activity would be, I have always been arguing, equal to detection. So that's not an important exercise. Look at the sources, methods, agencies. Now it is silent on agencies, not only in the agencies, sector. Agencies, agencies and the people who are indulged in it. Okay. In the corporate sector, it doesn't name so very clearly. In black and white, doesn't. Yeah, and similarly, the political and administrative class, a very important and non-marginal phenomena, a non-deviant phenomena in the sense that uh, deviance is marginal. Something which is, strikes the mainstream and the main lines of the economy cannot be considered and shoved under the carpet any longer. So that that particular processes whereby it has taken such strong roots has so powerful impact on everything that happens and doesn't happen, both. So from this point of view, it's a report that certainly should make people think and carry this work forward rather than look for missing aspects are more important. Uh, the missing aspect, and let me, let, me, let me put this a little clearly because when the debate of black on black money has been going on in this country, one of the one of the things with the political, whether it's the political parties or NGOs or other people who are who have been campaigning for this, one of the things are the names, and one of the names, some of the names which they want to see are names of politicians, of bureaucrats, and things like that. That is, the disappointment is that these names are not there. And you think it is... It's not an report. Sorry? It's not an enforcement and detection agency's report. Right. It's just done by a technical department, administrative department. So I don't think it was a, a, a kind of a task interested to this agency. So you didn't people. expect the, the, any, any those kind of names to come out in this report yeah. at all? Those people who want it, let them fight in the parliament and the, uh, create another ruckus and the whole its proceedings till the names come out. <laughs> but this is certainly uh, not expected of a white paper that it will become an instrument of implementation. A white paper tells you the facts about how these work. Ab absolutely. Important. Let me go to, I, I have uh, with me Rajiv Kumar, the Secretary General of FIKI. Since uh, Professor Kabra, uh, Rajiv Kumar, you're there. You can hear me? Yes, I am. Okay. Of course. Uh, Yes, Prof, uh, uh, Professor Cabra made a very interesting thing. One of the one of the things which comes out quite clearly in this white paper is the way the corporate sector has is responsible for generation of black money. He said it's this report, though it doesn't say in so many words, but the fact remains that corporate sector is one of the biggest culprits as far as generation of black money is concerned, not only internally and also its illicit outflow to the other countries also. What do you have to say on this? Well, uh, I, I dare say that friend, uh, my friend Professor Cabra has read the, read the report in a manner which I have not been able to read. And when he said in as many words, I don't know which words he has read, but uh, irrespective of what the report says, and I don't think it says that, we must begin to recognize that the corporate sector does not want to generate black money just for the heck of it. Because I think the corporate sector much rather and there's an increasing number of corporate sector players who pay their due taxes and who will get on with their job and create value and wealth for the economy. Now, to, to, to point a finger at the corporate sector, the corporate sector generates cash because of two fundamental reasons. One, which is electoral funding, where a huge amount of cash is required despite whatever we have been doing, and the, and the, and the political process demands that of the corporate sector. And two, that there are laws in this economy and there are processes in the economy which necessitate the generation of cash to pay the rent seekers and the bribes and everything else that is that is demanded from the corporate sector. Mm. I, Professor Cabra would do us a big favor if he had pointed out to these two root causes of the generation of black money in the economy rather than treat as it were the you know the symptom for the disease. But let me just go on to say that the white paper, we welcome the white paper. Vicky welcomes it very much. And there are two or three things that I need to point out here. Yes, please. One, that the paper says clearly that they have commissioned the National Council of Applied Economic Research and the CVDT uh, to pre prepare a detailed report estimating the magnitude of the black economy and also identifying the, uh, you know, the, 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 the sources of generation of cash economy and also suggesting the recommendation. So the white paper in that sense is just a preliminary position paper for the government to take better, greater steps in, in, in the future. 
Right. Second thing is that they have mentioned the feasibility or the possibility of entering into a bilateral agreement with Switzerland, just as Germany and the UK have done, to clinch the bringing back of the money that has been restored, that has been you know taken away abroad in Switzerland, which amounts to something like you know there are estimates of about you know more than lakhs of crores or rupees. UK and Germany have successfully signed this deal with Switzerland that they will bring about they will bring 50% of that money back, and in future all that deposit that remains there will pay 30% the, the stipulated rate of tax uh, on that deposit. Right. We in Fiki have suggested very strongly to the finance ministry to have that scheme, and we are happy that that mention is it, it, it finds mention in the white paper. Okay, uh, let me come to Hema. Hema. Um, it's um, quite refreshing to hear Rajiv Kumar you know, accepting the fact that the corporate sector has been forced to generate black money for various reasons. One he says is about the electoral funding. The second is about the laws and processes itself, which makes rent seekers, you know, they have to keep money aside for rent seekers, so they have to generate black money. So this is something which has been accepted. So uh, you think these aspects have been tackled in this report? I think Rajiv Kumar is absolutely right in saying that corporates need to generate a lot of money, uh, you know, cash uh, for funding elections. But the point that is missing in the report, uh, clearly missing in the report, is the, uh, you know, uh, causing the nexus between the political establishment and companies. Now, this calls for big reforms in political funding. Now, why aren't political parties or even companies talking about uh, such reforms in political funding? I think that's a fundamental issue which is which the white which is missing in the white paper. Okay, this is very interesting, uh, Professor Kabra. Coming back to you, that linkages is not established in this report. Did you expect those linkages to be established? The corporate politic politician nexus, which which creates corporates, businessmen, industry uh, industrials, industrialists, politician nexus. Is there, is, there, is, is there any hint of that nexus at all in this? You see, I, I don't think uh, uh, any hint of that kind so far a cursory look shows. Mm. Might which is uh, in 108 pages, yeah. uh, you know, buried somewhere and so on, one has to discover. But the point that this political compulsion and rent seeking, yes. I think it is too much. Much before democracy came and elections came, we had companies and the managing agency system. If you look at the record of it, particularly even by the stalwarts like Professor Lokanathan and so on. It is a story of deceit, uh, it is a story of greed. stealing people's money, greed. That is simple thing. A company is a, an entity working with others' money on the basis of a given charter. A given charter is publicly approved. In this uh, report, the agencies dealing with and so on, the laws dealing with, the company law is just not mentioned anywhere so far that I, as I could see. Uh, that's a very important lacuna, and particularly because a new company law is on the anvil. Yes. The fact that you assume that whatever is your compulsion to still march over others, rather than doing it through, say, competitive technical innovations, through better product design, better serving the consumers, better conserving the environment, and so on. You say, if we buy a politicians, and thereby we get about Six and a, about six, linear, almost six lakhs crores of rupees are given by way of tax concessions and tax expenditure. Let anybody on earth explain what is the justification for and what is the okay. society has let me let me, let me get Rajiv Kumar on this. Rajiv Kumar, I think you, you want to react to what Professor Kabra is saying. Yes, no, I want to say that this, this whole business of painting the corporate sector black as, black as a black pot is just completely besides the point. The corporate sector does not want to, uh, you know, get into deceit and cheat and greed and all of that. I mean, there are. I mean, this corporate sector creates employment and value and wealth for the country. I mean, are we saying that companies like Infosys and Wipro and Tata's and 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 and, and Marico and everybody else? I mean, we are all just just painting everybody black with it. It's just not right. The corporate sector. I I can assure you. We passed a resolution in December 2010 in our National Executive Committee meeting in Kolkata, it's on the record, to say that the, that the FIKI is sick of corruption, it is spoiling India's image, and we demanded swift and severe punishment for all those involved in corruption, whether they were by bribe takers or givers. This is the corporate sector stand. Okay. I, I'm, I, I'm sure the other associations have also done that. 
the, rather than catch the symptom or, or you know and and only keep talking about the symptom we need to tackle the roots well, of the sources okay, of generation okay. of black money in the economy okay rajiv kumar please stay on we will uh, we will go into a short break we'll come back and discuss where are the roots of the problem uh, please keep watching we'll be back very soon Welcome back. We are discussing the white paper on black money, which has been tabled in the parliament today by the finance minister, Mr. Pranam Mukherjee. Hema, coming to you. Yeah. Uh, you know, this this paper has some interesting points. One is about the Swiss accounts itself. How the um, you know the the Indian deposits in Swiss banks in 2008 was 23,373 crores, and this is according to the Swiss Bankers Association figures, which the the white paper mentions. From 23,373 crores in 2008, it is now in 2010. It came down to 9,295 crores, a huge 60% uh, uh, fall. In, so that does it mean that the people who had kept their money were smart enough to just move it away, or what? Well, how do you explain um, this? Actually, there has been a lot of pressure from the G20 for uh, Switzerland to uh, come clean in the sense end its banking secrecy. So. Uh, Switzerland has been under a lot of pressure to uh, uh, to come clean, and so have been other tax havens. So one of the uh, things that have been pointed out is that yes, uh, money has gone out of uh, Swiss banks. Probably that is uh, mm. that probably is also true, and the government says that this is a genuine es genuine estimate. But uh, my feeling is what Mr. Rajiv Kumar said about uh, you know Switzerland having a pact with Germany and Switzerland, uh, sorry uh, Germany and um, UK, UK. Uh, where uh, you know your past if you uh, you are forgiven for your past uh, if you don't declare you know exactly. had undisclosed income in the past and charge 30% uh, or your future income you'll have to also reveal your identity now yes there are moral hazards because uh, you know an amnesty is morally corrosive it penalizes a honest taxpayer it uh, rewards a dishonest taxpayer but i think some way the government also needs to be pragmatic maybe you could work out a deal with switzerland like you uh, i mean like uk and germany have done hmm. um that would probably no but this uh, sir, professor kabra th does it mean this fall in deposits in the swiss bank does it mean that people have moved their accounts moved their money to a, to to safer tax havens you see this uh, political class in india has uh, made excessively an unfounded uh, noise about external thing what the simple thing the fact is that that money illegal uh, income wealth savings assets black money uh, black money illegal or black generated within the country generated here and then only it goes out right. though it expands there as well yes. but the uh, i mean gangotri is a good word for such a dirty thing <laughs> but you know uh, i would say that the muck starts here yes. right so that uh, those who are trying to emphasize and over emphasize what is the, the what is your thing. what is your estimate of black money within the country as in terms of gdp in, in percentage said, terms of gdp i say that you know if anybody who looks even at this the white paper does it does it give us any paper figure? indicates it very clearly yes. that the sources and the processes and the activities generates are more or less ubiquitous i don't want to get into a slinging match with my friend rajiv yes. but i would say one thing that uh, the social contribution that you mentioned let's not forget that uh, total formal sector employment which to which the uh, corporate the, corporate the, is a major entity has not increased by a single number over the last 20 years it has in <coughs> fact gone down mm. so uh, one or two instances there and the loss of jobs and destruction of jobs elsewhere doesn't tell a story and uh, since this issue is not one of uh, trying to paint any particular sector black or white the question is that the very basis on the basis is the economy is managed and run is such that uh, there is ample scope and possibilities the deterrence that is essential how many people who have been identified in the political class in the business class uh, so many you know uh, i haven't looked at the figure but i'm given that you know the total number of detections and successful yes, yes. cases and so on some information there that's why i say that in some senses 
coming from the official sources, uh, it creates better ground for understanding, though a lot more work is required. But the essential point remains that you have to do something basic about the social character of the economy, so, social entrepreneurship, absolutely. social needs and so on, so that the private corporate sector working with others' money doesn't become the private preserve of the promoters and the handful of people, which it has unfortunately Very become. Very strong word. Mr. Rajiv Kumar, you heard Professor Kabra. You know, very strong words. You know, you need to you need to uh, answer I, I, them. I I just don't I just don't know what uh, Kamal is uh, talking and and what he's what what he's implying. You know, honestly, because you know, to say that the uh, formal sector employment has not been increased. Formal sector includes the government sector, where the employment has been going down. The formal oh. sector does not include the number of contract laborers which have come up in millions at the moment in the service sector, anyway, which is creating anyway, all Rajiv, the uh, software Rajiv uh, Kumar, exports in we, the economy. Rajiv Hello, Kumar, we are not. Rajiv Kumar, sorry, we are not. We are not discussing the. We are not discussing about employment uh, rate and things like that. The question is about black money. No, but, the, but, but you know, he, but he initially, raised those I appreciate. But, but, but you know, this is this is where I appreciate the fact that. But but can I just complete that because see, yeah. yes, please. No, no. I just want to say that it is it is fruitless for us to talk about the black white paper on the black economy and only talk about the corporate sector misusing social public funds etc etc which is just simply not true. Absolutely. What I we need okay. to the, focus the on the today political class is an is equally that this white, responsible is, is, is country. This, is Absolutely. This Rajiv Kumar, you know, I take I take your uh, your your argument is. Well founded, and I also take it. Your argument is well founded. Class. We are not only saying that the corporate sector is but responsible so, so for it. Corporate sector is partly responsible. The political class, the administrative class, so as Professor Kabra pointed out. I would make a correction. Out. That political class and business class, they used to be symbiotically hand in, linked hand, up. Hand in now, no, no, symbiotic relationship has turned into a fusion of the two. Yes. No. No. Government is business. Business is government. That's Absolutely. Let, 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 me, let, let, me, let, let me let me get let me get Hema's uh, point of view. I, Rajiv Kumar will come back to you later. Hema. Uh, I think my point again is that if you are able to trace every rupee that is going in to fund a political party, be it from companies or from any other source, if you have a system in place to track every rupee that is going into the funding, of half your problem is solved. Why aren't political parties looking at it? Why aren't companies talking about it? No, I, Rajiv Kumar, I want, you, 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 you have seen the white paper. Now, do you think that your, the, the problems the corporate sector which you mentioned in the beginning about, you know, electoral, ele, uh, having to fund elections and uh, having to, uh, you know, cater to the rent seekers as far as laws and processes are concerned, do you think there is a hint of tackling this problem. The, the finance minister, uh, in, uh, or sorry, rather the white paper says that institutions like Lokpal will be able to help in tackling this problem. Do you also agree with that? Well, to some extent, yes. But let me just take you to another part of the uh, problem, which is that today in India, you've got 33 million taxpayers. Right. Uh, which is, let's say, 33 million households pay tax. About 120 million households are below the poverty line. Right. The total number of households in the country is 250 million. Right. So that means that about 120 million households, which could have paid tax, do not pay tax. That is because a large part of this, these households are living on a cash economy. We need to reform the tax department, the tax process, the direct tax collection system in this country. Right. We need to make this much more you know, tax, ta taxpayer friendly. We need to revamp our indirect tax departments, make them much more accountable, get the GST in place so that large sectors like the real estate sector, the construction industry, which only operate on the cash income base, cash basis, do not do so. We have to increase the use of credit cards and the bank accounts that, in the, the economy. The white paper, the white paper the talks about steps increase that the, the use white of paper and refers, card. refers also. Anyway, they, they do that, but what I'm saying is that. Yes. What the, what the study that the white paper promises will be done must look at how to, as it were, make the economy much less cash intensive and, and the measures that will be needed are the things like the GST, the use of, you know, the spread of bank credit, the spread of banking, uh, you know, the, the reformation of the electoral Mr. process. Mr. Rajiv Kumar. Have simple public, public funding of the electoral process. Right, Mr. Rajiv Kumar, one of the things which the uh, uh, white paper talks about 
is how the corporate structure is misused and it has given the example of Vodafone actually and, and it talks about the round tripping, how, how the corporates indulge in round, round tripping and the sophisticated schemes they are employing to avoid tax. See, these are all, these are all issues where the corporates are directly, have been directly, you know, uh, pointed out a, a, as the reason for generation of black money. Actually, Professor Cabra. Girish, if you look at seriously, you will find that uh, the entire phenomenon of black economy is very closely related to the entire economic structure. The definition that they given on the page one itself is that uh, it's not just tax specific, illegitimate activities of all kinds and not outright uh, illegal and criminal activities. And where the entire list, okay. you know, this chart uh, has been Professor given. Kabra, there. Professor no, Kabra, just one minute, no, I will no, say. Professor Kabra, no, we have, Professor Kabra, we have Gurudas Das Gupta on the phone yeah. line. There has been some problem. He's uh, He's there. Uh, he will be there with us very briefly. Uh, Mr. Das Gupta, can you hear me? Yes. Mr. Das Gupta, you have seen the uh, uh, the white paper uh, which has been released today. Do you see this white paper taking us somewhere towards finding some solutions to the problem of black economy? I have not been able to read the black the paper on black money because I am having some problem in the eye. Okay. Infection. Okay. But one thing I can tell you, black money is being generated in the country ever since India has become independent or even before that. Yes. And it is, nobody knows the dimension of the black money. Nobody knows where all the black money is. But we are all aware of one thing, that black money is generated illegitimately by violating the law of the land and they are yes, acting yes, yes. against the economy of the country. Yes. It is a, there is a parallel economy run by them. Right. And it is the source of corruption. Mr. Das Gupta, the, there has been a lot of disappointment by the, from the political uh, parties. They say that the names of people who are supposed to have, who are supposed to have stashed away wealth their names are not mentioned in the report. Did you expect the names to be mentioned in this, in this white paper? I always believe those who are, those who are criminals and culprits and violated the law of the land, their face must be made known to the people. Yes, okay. I always believe it. Okay, okay, thank the you. Exposure itself, right. exposure itself is a guarantee of punishment. Absolutely. Okay, thank you, Mr. Das Gupta, for joining us. Uh, now, coming back to Rajiv Kumar. Rajiv Kumar, the question is how the yeah. strategies which are there to generate, to check generation of black money, you know, one of the things, what is it that the corporate sector will take upon itself to ensure that at least from as far as its side is concerned, they will be, they, that you will do enough to see that and also help the government in checking this menace. The corporate sector is is committed is due to, is committed to reducing the generation of black money because it doesn't help its interest at all. Because the corporate sector would much rather have a very clean transaction so that they can they can at the end of the day uh, devote their attention and mind to what they are best at, which is value creation. So we ourselves had suggested to the government this agreement, this scheme that we are talking about, the Switzerland. I am my, I am myself t saying that what we need is the revamping of the direct tax and the indirect tax system. Okay. So okay. as far as the corporate tax is concerned, Mr. Nigam, I assure you that we are not interested for even for a minute in the generation of black economy because okay. that does not help us in any way whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hima, last, quick last words to you. You think the government is now is on the right track as far as dealing with this issue is concerned if you going by the white paper. Well, I, at least coming out to the white paper, it's on the right track, but it should be, uh, I mean, going ahead, like Mr. Rajiv Kumar said, the center must convince states about GST. GST will really improve compliance. Uh, two is your tax base has to be widened. It's appalling that just, uh, you know, uh, 3.5 crore people actually pay taxes in India. Okay. Your tax rates must be okay. lowered. We are completely run out of time. It's evident that this white paper will, should be the beginning point for us to tackle the menace, but it's not going to be easy, as Professor Cabra points out, that you know there are se several issues involved. But 
it is a big disappointment for 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 the people for those people who are thinking that the names of names of those who have stashed away money he would come out but as professor kabra says that was not the intention of this white white paper but we will have to we will have to wait and look for some other sources for that for those information thank you very much thanks to all my guests for joining me uh, mr rajiv kumar of fiki uh, mr uh, professor kabra and hema ramkrishnan please keep watching we'll come back with another issue on the big picture